него есть музыка, ACDC и Black Sabbath. А чтобы вы, каждый из вас, из героев, выбрал бы себе в качестве музыки для своего героя, тем более, что я знаю, что, ну, все знают, что Скарь Йоханссон сладкий песни. И вопрос номер два, это уже, наверное, создатель фильма. А, все, ну, я понимаю, что DC Comics — это ваши конкуренты, но, может быть, какой-нибудь из DC Comics тоже взяли бы свою суперкоманду? Спасибо. I um, love you. Um, <laughs> sounds so stupid. Um, when I when it first played Loki in uh, in Thor, I was I was inspired by um, the very very angry music of the Prodigy. If anybody knows that, it's like it's like grungy '90s dance music, but for some reason it worked for me. I'm gonna go for a Trent Reznor sound that I think that that's a good way. It's good to fight to, I think. Right? Trent Reznor. Uh, I think I'll go with uh, Muse, who's a to me a, a spin-off of Queen in Radiohead, and uh, so the anthems and sort of visceral. Um, that's what I think. Uh, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. I would say the, uh, the Hulk is The Clash. Do you know that band? Right. Yes, good. Uh, we, uh, Marvel Comics, uh, are we going to include DC characters? Probably not for a couple hundred years after we've done all 8,000, 10,000 Marvel characters first. I would, um, I'd love to be able to explore that more. And we've talked about that. We've talked about it, and it's, you know, I think the, the really exciting thing about, um, about Marvel is that it's is that the films are kind of there's almost like a fan choice in some way, and um, I think the more kind of enthusiastic responses from fans, the more enthusiastic Marvel is about um, you know introducing new characters and also um, you know highlighting other characters and doing kind of independent films for them. So um, yeah, just ask for it and we shall perhaps receive. And okay, now. I got a question for all the members. I mean, I've got enough mess, but this one, it, it's not very comfortable to ask questions. In. So, uh, every Aven Avenger has his own superpower that differentiates him from the other members of the team. So my question is, uh, which Avenger is the coolest, the best, the most powerful, perhaps? And And by the way, Loki's opinion is also. Uh, I'd like to pass this question to Tom as Loki, as he's the only uh, objective. <laughs> you want me to pick favorites, Roman? Just this once. <laughs> oh, that's so hard. Um, Who's the coolest Avenger? Your brother. <laughs> so I was thinking that, but then I was thinking the relationship's too bittersweet, you know? Um, I, I should, they're all pretty cool. I mean, they're all amazing, aren't they? They all have different superpowers and, um, um, Uh, yeah, that they're all, they have, um, everybody is special in their own way. Just, just say Hulk and get it over with. <laughs> well, when you look at it, the Hulk, um, the Hulk's really the only one you can bring him down, you know. They both have a, a, a predilection for the color green, um, so maybe, maybe it's the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs>
Неожиданный ответ, но спасибо большое. А, прошу, та сторона. Well, um, we, we both had a long time actually because we were both initially cast in Thor about six or seven months before we were due to shoot it and, and uh, Kenneth Branagh who directed that film was very, very keen that we um, collate all of our research and of course we weren't just drawing from the, the Marvel comics but we were drawing from the Norse myths and, and this incredible mythology that's been around for, for thousands of years. So. Um, We did a lot, I think. We, did a lot of, we, we, we tried to take the most interesting facets of the mythology um, and the most interesting facets of the comics and, and create these characters which were larger than life and three-dimensional. And um, what Stanley and Jack Kirby created is, is this extraordinary charisma in both of them. But, but there's also an enormous emotional um, Um, history that they have together, which was also very useful. So we, we had some time. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree with that? Uh, yeah, the, the biggest thing I took from the North, uh, the, the Norse myths, were um, the kind of fatalistic attitude that the, they lived with, and the idea that their death was preordained and set, so they, which led them into a sort of fearlessness in battle. Um, and that was kind of summed up Thor for me. Um, and I think, you know, yeah, that he's the family's approach to, to life, to preservation of the nine realms. It's great when you can draw from lots of different things. I mean, these, these characters have been around for so long. Like, the Thor and Loki feature in Wagner's Ring Cycle. I remember when I first got to LA, I was driving over to meet my accountant in Pasadena, <laughs> listening, listening to the Ring Cycle. Um, I thought I really arrived in Hollywood now. What we have is to, is to make great movies based on characters that we love and great stories from the comics. Whether they're known or lesser known around the world is less of our concern. We get amazing actors like this, we hire great filmmakers, and hopefully we turn into a movie that suddenly it's known around the world. So certainly we're going to continue to do that, and uh, we have a number of characters that are, uh, that are going to be up for us next. Some of which you've probably never heard of, but hopefully I'll sit here in five years with another, uh, with another few movies under our belt. А что это был написано? Ну, это пока неизвестно. Потому что, вот, например, в комиксе, по которому были сняты мстители, там были, по-моему, отца, пчела, муравей, что-то такое, да? That's absolutely correct. Yes, right? You know your, you know your comics. Good. Yes, we have a great writer director named Edgar Wright who's working on that film for us now someday. You can't. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, the uh, Black Widow. That's never gonna happen. We'll see. I want to be a horny Hawkeye. I think Chris Hemsworth would make an extraordinary Spider-Man. Thanks, Tom. I think Jeremy Renner should run Disney. The audience is spoken. Shareholders unite. Uh, there's nothing Disney about this space, so <laughs> I think this is the first time I'm going to have six-year-old fans. It's so strange. Mark, you're quiet over there. Wolverine. Спасибо огромное. Прошу следующий вопрос. Игорь Палаев, первое здание. Я приветствую вас в Москве. Очень рад, что вы приехали к нам. Это большая честь вас принять и увидеть жилье. Вопрос два. Один ко всем актерам и спонтанистам главных ролей, второй уже просто непосредственно. Ко всем вопрос. Скажите, если бы у вас была возможность остаться актерами или стать теми героями, которые вы сыграли, что бы вы выбрали? 
И вопрос к Дауне. У вас есть два замечательных персонажа. Это Тони Старк и Шерлок Холмс. Если выбирать между ними, на кого вы чувствуете сами близость, кому ближе? Спасибо. Майкрофон! I've done both of them for a third franchise. What was the first question? I don't remember the first question. Oh, I definitely want to stay an actor. Um, Loki is uh, such a crazy cat. <laughs> um, I don't want to be him for the rest of my life. Is Crazy Cat a superhero? <laughs> Actually, I really, I think I should, that should be my next project, is I should play the Crazy Cat. We're here to announce. Yeah. What? That's why I'd rather be. No, he's saying, would I rather be an actor or a master assassin? I'm going to go with master assassin. But you're already both, Scarlett. Ooh, I like it. What? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 No. no. I'm turning this off. А все ответили, что ли, да? Кто-то, наверное, забыл немножечко уточнить по поводу того, кто остается актером, а кто берет. Or a superhero. Um, hmm. I love the idea of being a superhero, um, but I like being an actor because it gives me the powers I don't have as a human being to pull off being a superhero. So me, Chris Hemsworth as a superhero would be rather a letdown compared to Chris Hemsworth the actor with Thor's Thor's superpowers. I'm exhausted. Okay. Does that make sense? I would, uh, I'd, I'd still like to be an actor, but play a bunch of superheroes. Then I'd keep playing, I could play a bunch of superheroes. I could play a bunch of superheroes. I could play a bunch of superheroes. And still be an actor. Uh, I'll do anything to, to work with these kids at this table uh, any day of the week. So whether that's an actor or may not. Браво, спасибо огромное за то, что при подготовке к роли выучили не несколько фраз и выражений. Спасибо. I wish I had some time that I could visit. But I, I, I've always wanted to come here. I'm very curious fun to kind of explore my heritage. And um, I think maybe later today we might see the Kremlin, which would be very exciting. So I'll have something to talk about on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, I have to say, I do speak Russian in the film, so I do technically know some Russian. I just, I just can't remember any of it right now. <laughs> um, but I learned it pretty. I learned it in a couple days. We had this great Russian um, teacher, Russian language teacher, and um, I learned it phonetically. But luckily, because she was Russian and she was a real character, she she had a lot of, you know, she was very emphatic, and so I was able to speak it and not just sound like I was parroting her. Um, so that was cool. Скарлетт, а попробуйте произнести свое имя, но на русский манер, вот по-русски. Черная вдова. Получится у вас сейчас? Черная вдова. Wait, I need my translator to say it again. Say it again. Черная в... 
Вдова. Вдова? Вау! Спасибо. Ну и а, все актеры, насколько я помню, отвечают на вопрос. Да, что, что увидели в Москве? Что, ну, наверное, ничего еще не успели а, увидеть. Что вы хотите увидеть, прошу. I, it's actually my second time in Moscow. Um, I came here first five years ago, um, and uh, I performed in a theater, I think, Pushkin Theater, um, at the Chekhov International Festival. I did, I did some Shakespeare here, um, that very old, that fashion thing. Um, and I had, I had a wonderful time, um, because obviously the, the theater culture in Russia is, is amazing, and it's one of the, one of the most, um, one of the richest and most diverse communities of actors in the world. And uh, I was stunned at how many theatres you have in this city. There are as many theatres on every street corner as there are cinemas in London. It's amazing. Um, and I had a really, really good time. Um, but I remember the strange thing of, as an actor, just before you go, go on stage, you always want a quick hit of... Um, I always, I always like to eat a banana, and I remember finding it very difficult to find bananas on the way to the theatre. That's my memory of it. But I had a huge affection for Moscow, for the very kind of this. Спасибо. I'm staying in Mark Ruffalo's room uh, at the Ritz Carlton, and I'd like you all to come uh, visit me there later. Uh, who's next? From Moscow. Yeah, we are, I'm excited to see the Kremlin as well. That's, uh, but as we've only all been here for literally a couple of hours, so I have seen the inside of the hotel and, and from here to the airport, but uh, certainly I'm excited to get out and, you know, see the city. It looks, looks incredible from the window. Спасибо. Спасибо. Mark? До свидания. I, um, I, I hear that um, part of the sightseeing here is drinking Russian standard platinum vodka, a favorite of the KGB, is that true? Absolutely. No? Did that go over poorly? Is that, is that a trans... That was an American sense of humor thing, I didn't play on that. Um, I, I just got here at 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I was impressed by how easy it is to move around in the city, how little traffic there is here. <laughs> I love all of you very much. Honestly, I think what's remarkable uh, for some, if not all of us, was growing up with such a different idea of, um, of, of Russia, both um, politically and and socially, and, and I think it's just such a testament that when we were um, asked by Disney what the most important market for us to come and, uh, and, and be present in, and we were all happy to come, they said that, that Russia's the, kind of the, you know, the, the top tier emerging market, which I think just speaks, just gives me a lot, a lot of hope for um, you know, our future as a planet, that we're able to come here and be in a place to be uh, exchanging, you know, ideas and entertainment and it's definitely a two-way street too. Ну что ж, на этой крайне правильной и крайне позитивной ноте мы предлагаем закончить сегодняшнюю пресс-конференцию.